Hey everybody, the future is now, and the future is my son being alive versus him almost being dead. Okay, maybe that's dramatic, but this is the reality of what happened to me. Okay, I wanted to share this story with you. On the 24th of January this year, my son Chase was hit by a car while riding his bike. He was thrown, thrown into the windshield, hit his head on, broke the windshield, then rolled off and hit the other side of his head on the concrete. Um, it was basically the worst day of my life, okay? I didn't know if he would survive this, okay? The woman's car that hit him was not a Tesla, okay? And if it was a Tesla, he never would have been hit. The car would have seen him. The car wasn't traveling that fast. It would have stopped in time. <sighs> Sorry, it's hard to get through this. Anyway, instead, this was the toughest time in his life to recover, he had to recover from his leg contusion. He had to recover from multiple um, concussions. Um, he had been working on a speech for the FBLA, which I don't know if anybody knows, the Future Business Leaders of America. He was working on that beforehand, and he knew it inside and out. After the accident, he couldn't remember any of it. And after about a few weeks of practice, he went on to win the Florida State Championship for that speech. Uh, that was one of the best days of my life. Um, we are trading in the two BMW i3s, all electric, which I mentioned before, for Tesla, full self-driving Model 3s, okay? We want to do the best thing for our family, okay? You know, people are always putting a false price tag on specs and vehicles. Oh, the performance, this and that, and how many are they selling? Oh, this is not the proper price tag, okay? They're not putting a proper price on lives. How much would you pay to save a family member, how much would you pay? 50,000, 100, a million? How much would you pay to save one of your family members? Or even an animal or a dog or something? How much would you pay to save, to save somebody like this? Um, this is probably why we'll own Teslas for the rest of our lives because their autonomy is going to be the most advanced and it's gonna be the most protective, okay? Special thanks to Elon Musk and everyone working at Tesla. Now you know, this was for Zach and Jesse. Thank you. Um, for making the world better. Um, best regards, the family, Edward, Anita, Chase, and Ednita. Oh, P.S., my son in 2018, uh, his speech was uh, about autonomy and full self-driving and driverless cars, and he won fifth in the state of Florida for that speech. So, but anyway, this leads me into what I want to talk about, okay? Why the top 10 reasons for buying an EV or a Tesla, Okay. Number one is safety, okay? You can see why now that um, it would be, for safety would be my number one thing. My son's gonna be driving in two years. Do you think I want him to have an accident and get injured or possibly die in a car accident? No, okay? Um, what would you pay to save the life of a family member again? Just, just do the math on that one. Figure it out yourself. That's the question that you need to answer, okay? And safety, Okay, autopilot is 8.5 times safer than a normal human being. So let's break that down. Forget about the numbers in this way. Let's make it simple, okay? So for every accident that I would have in a Tesla, you, if you don't have a Tesla or full autonomy, you're going to have eight and a half accidents, or you're going to have nine or eight accidents, okay? That's crazy. That's a crazy difference, okay? Now, okay, the environment. I put it as number two, okay? My wife's it's for number one. That's she wants to save the world that way. Okay. Do you even care about the environment? If you don't care about the environment, then move environment wherever you want. But I mean, all EVs share the advantage here. I mean, they're all helping the environment. We're not polluting, we're not breathing in all the all the pollutants. Okay. Economics, all EVs again, they're one fifth the cost, operating costs. Okay, they're one fifth of the operating cost. And ask yourself this do you like Pumping or paying for gas? I don't, and I don't pump or pay for gas anymore. No, no more, never for the rest of my life. Not gonna happen. I'm not wasting five minutes per, uh, let's say every two weeks, 10 minutes a month times um, 12 months, that'd be 120 minutes. Okay, two hours a year times 10 years would be 20 hours. Wasting 20 hours of my life pumping gas, no thanks. All right, that's out. Okay, time. 
Well, how do you get more time in a Tesla? Well, I mean, if, if the car is driving itself, you have more time to do anything else you want to do. If you want to work, it's basically a mobile office. Uh, it's a mo mobile entertainment center. You know, you can watch movies, you can work, you can do whatever you want to do. You have more time, which really is more freedom. I used to think that autonomy was going to be less freedom for people, right? You're taking away their ability to drive. No, you're giving so many more freedoms. The freedom to do all these other things in a vehicle that you couldn't do previously. You can't even text in a vehicle. You know, you can't text. You can't do a lot of things. It's not like you can watch a movie or take a nap. Uh, yeah, I mean, most people that's, to me, I'm like, well, what would you do if, you had a, if your car drove itself? I'd be sleeping on the way to work. That was like the number one answer. I would be sleeping on the way to work. Ask yourself again, what would you do with the extra time? And is it is autonomy more freedom or less? Don't think of it as more freedom unless it's really taking away all your freedoms. Your only freedom in life is driving a car around? Okay. Uh, anyway, entertainment, we just went into that. It's a basically, I mean, come on, movies, TV, sports, Netflix, YouTube. I mean, everything. You're going to be able to do anything that you do in your house, in your car. Okay. So, and Tesla has an advantage there right now. Uh, range, Tesla has an advantage now, but I think all EVs are going to be 240 plus range and it's not going to be an issue. Range is not going to be something where it's going to be a big selling point on a car down the road. You know, are you worried about the charging issues? And that's another thing. I mean, Tesla has the, the charging stations, which leads us into travel. I mean, if they have charging stations all over the place and more regular EV charging stations are being placed everywhere, eventually they will be everywhere. It's not like it's a problem that we can't solve by technology or whatever. They just need to put more of them out. That's all there is to it. Um, and would you travel more if it's cheaper? Remember, it's five times cheaper for gas, so it's five times cheaper to travel on that end of the um, economics of it. So it doesn't cost you as much money. So more people will be traveling with these cars than with gas cars because you're not spending as much money. You're not wasting as much money on gas. So that's, that's a good one for travel. It's definitely going to help that. Performance, okay. Teslas have amazing performance. They're definitely the performance leaders, and especially the uh, Model 3. But, I mean, do you even care if your car is fast? I mean, I've driven sports cars most of my life. You know, I've driven Mustangs. I've driven, you know, the Lotus. I've driven BMW i135. Uh, I've driven all kinds of different cars, and um, it's important to me that the car be quick. I love driving the car fast and it's fun. Even if it's zero to 60, just kind of launching, you know, zero to 60. Still, that's fun. I mean, it still kind of, it still gets your heart racing a little bit, you know, and reliability. Okay, all this advantage, all EVs. EVs are more reliable because there's less moving parts. So this is something my dad always used to talk about. Uh, you don't want things with all kinds of moving parts because that's something more that can break down. So the less moving parts you have, the less chance of things breaking down. So... Uh, anyway, so that's it. Oh, and do you fear battery issue or breakdown? That was the first thing that strayed me away from EVs a long time ago. And I was like, oh, yeah, but batteries were like $12,000, $15,000. Then you're going to have to replace them after three or four years. I mean, I was always so worried about that. But now the reliability and the warranties on them are like for a crazy amount of years. So that's just kind of out of the picture now. So the reliability is good. But anyway, that's my top 10. Obviously, number one, safety. You know, I want to protect my family. You know, you know, number two, I, I'm honestly, I think freedom and autonomy is number two for me, but that encompasses all kinds of things, you know, and the economics of it are great. Um, like I said, range is not less of an issue and, you know, travel, I'll definitely travel more, you know, and uh, performance, obviously performance good and reliability is good. So anyway, that's how, that's my top 10. I mean, make your top 10 and ask yourself these questions for real, ask them and answer them to yourself, honestly. You don't even have to say anything to anybody, but ask yourself the questions and see really if it plays into your, I mean, if you keep answering these questions and they make sense to you, then EVs will totally make sense to you, you know, if, if, um, if you keep answering like, yeah, I don't wanna pay for gas, or yeah, I want more freedom and more time and more stuff like that, you know? So anyway, let's go to a quick breakdown of the stock. Well, we're on Ford Motor, hmm. Why am I checking Ford stock? Well, Ford just put out the Mach-E, Mustang Mach-E, um, all electric, Mustang SUV. Okay. And I thought, okay, well, wow, let's see if the stock jumped and let's see what it would do to Tesla. Okay. Let's see if it had any, you know, impact just for future reference. And what I found out was this is actually the data for the last five years, but let's, let's go in, let's short term it. Let's go for the last few months. Okay, well, this little sideways movement, I don't think you can see it here. 
Um, well, probably because it moved 0, 0.00. I was like, wow, uh, they came out with the news and the stock didn't move at all. Not up, not down. Like, that's strange. I'm like, well, why would that happen? I mean, I mean, I just couldn't believe that it didn't even give a boost to the stock. And then I was thinking, okay, well, Ford is a dividend-based stock. People buy that buy Ford stock are just buying it more or less for the dividend. They get their dividend every year, and they're happy about those dividends. And, um, and that's pretty much it. They don't really care where the stock price is because they're not really selling it. They're just getting their dividends every year and being happy with that. you know. And uh, so anyway... So that's part of it, it's just not a growth stock. And the last thing is, they tell news so far ahead, stock, Ford stock is not based on news. Okay, news doesn't drive Ford Motor Company. Okay, that's just not the big driving thing. It's not like every time Ford posts something, it's all over the place, oh my God, it's so crazy. No, I mean, but Tesla, for example, I mean, true, true growth stock. Let's check it out real quick and check a compare and let's see what happened to Tesla. What happened to Tesla because of the release of the Mach-E? Hmm. Well, it was right here. It, it went down. Wait, is that, did you see that small little, like, the movement down? I think it was like $2 a share. So, and honestly, I think that was more of a trade. I think traders were like, oh, man, they just released that. Let's, let's trade, against, uh, trade against Tesla, uh, you know. So I think it was more of a trade of, and $2 wasn't much of a gain on a trade. I mean, but, and then today it shot back up another, I don't know how many dollars. It, oh, here it is right here. Sorry. $9.53. So it went down $2 yesterday, but apparently the Mach-E did not phase Tesla. And it went up $9.53. Nine so let's put it into perspective. Ford stock is $8.90. And Tesla stock went up $9. Tesla stock went up a whole Ford Motor Company in one day. Is that right? Not really, but I mean, just to make a joke out of it, but still, that's kind of ridiculous if you think about it that way. You know, I mean, it's a percentage. Everything's based on the percentage. It went up 2.7% today. That's that's pretty good considering the news that, that and I people were saying, oh, but the, oh, it's going to go back down to 240 now. Uh, what, the, because they released the Mach-E, does that really actually battle Tesla. And I was thinking about it. And once again, how do I break it down? Analytically, what um, the people that are going to buy or who are considering buying a Tesla, are they now going to buy this Ford? Is that that compelling that they're going to go buy that? And my answer was no. I don't see that being a compelling it offer. Now, it will sell to people. So who is it going to sell to? Current Ford owners, I hope. I mean, it's going to sell to people who are already driving Fords. Now they're just going to be like, okay, cool. Now I can drive an electric Ford. So it doesn't, it's not like it's pulling away from Tesla's market share to sell that vehicle in a stock-based way to look at it. You know, is it pulling market share? And I don't believe so. So in that, you know, I wouldn't say this proves it, but I mean, to me, that's like, I mean, this is still pickup truck. This whole section here is pickup truck um, push. So everybody's like, well, should you sell or buy through the pickup truck and everything? And I don't give advice on buying or selling anything. I just tell you what I do. I'm giving you my opinion on what I do. And I show you why I do it in a, in a mathematical, analytical way, not in a, well, I just love Tesla. They're like the best company ever. Okay. That's not a reason to buy or sell something. I would have been shorting Tesla up here. Okay. I probably would have been. And, and, but once again, I wasn't. I wasn't in the market at that point, you know, but anyways, so now, so this was all earnings boost. This section here, all earnings boost. This section here is pretty much all pickup truck unveil potential news. So this, whether the stock goes up or down after the pickup truck is not really relevant because mo it basically already did. People aren't really considering that. Okay, this is what it means by baked into the pie. Now, people say that all the time in the market. Oh, but that's already cooked in there. That's already baked into it. And what they mean by that is this, is this is all the seasonings and all the spices baked into that pickup truck. Those are all the things. So it going up or down from here, it's already went up because of the pickup truck. You know, that's the main driving force right there. I mean, why were people buying during this point? You know, because they're about to unrelease uh, release it and they want to be in on that moment. So to me, that's a positive thing. You know, that shows that it's probably gonna have a positive effect on the stock, but I don't care either way if it goes up or down at that point of the release or not release. 
you know, I care more whether I'm going to like the truck or not myself, but than the actual stock, because that's not the whole thing. I mean, if they don't produce a pickup truck, then I guess that they're going to go bankrupt, right? No, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, that's one vehicle. That's like saying nine Disney films are awesome. And then they produce something that's like kind of average and Oh my God, I guess Disney stock's going to crash and nobody's ever going to watch a Disney movie again. That's just not how it works. So you can't base things on one thing or just on news. Everybody does everything on news. And this is a big misconception. Okay, one indicator in the market is news. Okay, and some news doesn't even move a stock up or down. I mean, look at what happened with Ford. That's That news of the release didn't do anything for the stock. You know, that news, if it was on Tesla side, would have done a lot. So news, it depends on the company you're dealing with, whether news is even an indicator at all. You know, it is more so with Tesla, but it's not the end all be all indicator of news. Trend is, is the biggest thing. Okay, you wanna follow the trends. And people say, oh, you don't know, bet against everybody else. No, you wanna follow the trend. If everybody's buying, that stock is driving up and you're making money that whole time. Don't be buying, um, in general, I wouldn't be buying going downward trend and keep buying down, down while you keep losing more and more money. Why not wait till the trend goes up and you start making money? I don't understand. Everybody gets so greedy trying to find a bottom that they keep buying going down. That's a mistake. That is a huge, huge mistake, okay? And that's what I'm gonna leave you with. That's a mistake. Subscribe, like, and I will post stuff all the time and keep you apprised of everything that Tesla's doing or any other company. If you have a company that you want me to, um, to track and show you a basic layout of what I think, my opinion on what I would do with this curtain thing, I, I will definitely explain it and go into detail on it. But I just wanted to give you an example of Tesla versus Ford. So, and, and you have it on a, on a stock-based analytical fashion. Anyway, thanks a lot, take care.